Hello beautiful souls, I'm your host Shakira Moore and welcome to another episode of the Perspective Matters podcast. So on Tuesday, March 8th, we celebrated International Women's Day and for the rest of this week and for the rest of this month, we are going to be celebrating women and in honor of celebrating women, I wanted to do an episode just to remind us how amazing women are and just to reflect on all that we have gone through, all that we're still going through, and just to remind us that we are really resilient beings and we should spend every day celebrating the fact that we're awesome. And it doesn't have to be something extravagant but at some point during the day take a moment to celebrate the fact that you're still here i'm going to share a proverb with you today and this proverb is a reminder to all of us but especially to my ladies that as long as you still have life there is hope so here it goes no mug no brook no coffee no dashway no mug no brook no coffee, no dashway. And the translation is, the mug is not broken, therefore the coffee is not wasted. The mug is not broken, therefore the coffee is not wasted. And the meaning is, even in the most difficult of times, if total devastation has not occurred, one should count their blessings. Even in the most difficult of times, If total devastation has not occurred, one should count their blessings. When I found this proverb, I thought, yes, this is definitely the one I want to share with you on this episode, especially because today of all days is the one year anniversary that I have been working from home and chances are This week or next week may be your one year anniversary of working from home if you happen to be working remotely. (laughs) I can't believe it's been one year since we've been working from home. I can't believe the way 2020 shaped up to be. I never imagined that one year ago, yesterday, when I said to my work friends, see you in two weeks, that see you in two weeks would become six weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, 52 weeks and counting. (laughs) We have gone through a lot personally, as a community, globally, and we're still going through it. And I have to say this year compared to last year, it's different. It's really different. And I appreciate the fact that I'm still here. I'm grateful for the fact that I could celebrate another International Women's Day. And this proverb is a great reminder that if there isn't total devastation, then there is still hope and there is still opportunity to turn things around. And I know prior to COVID, when we would hit March, you'd start to hear sentiments like, "Mm, the first quarter of the year is done. Have you accomplished your goals? How are you pacing? How are you tracking? And you would either feel excited or anxious because, oh my gosh, it's March already. Where is the time flying to? And I feel like this year, the approach should be different. The approach has to be different. It is important that we are kinder to ourselves, that we extend more grace to ourselves. And if we have goals, if we made promises, vows, resolutions at the start of the year and doesn't look like we're any closer to accomplishing them, don't be alarmed. You still have the rest of the year to go. And given all that you've gone through, I encourage you to cut yourself some slack. And for those of us who are pacing nicely, who are getting it done and crushing that list, I say more power to you. Keep going. You got this. So keep going. Every day that you get to take advantage of being on this earth is a good day. And that's why we call it the present. Because it's a gift. 
and how you use that time is really important. So I encourage you that as you go throughout the day, the rest of this week, the rest of the month, as you look ahead, do so with a measure of hope because there are enough examples and there is enough evidence that you are strong and you are resilient. By virtue of hearing my voice and listening to this episode, you made it through 2020. And even if just barely, the fact is you made it. So when you think about the finish line, some of us ran across it. Some of us bolted, sprinted, jogged, walked, crawled, hopped, helped over. The fact is you crossed the finish line. And now you're on to your next race, which is 2021. So celebrate the fact that you came through 2020. Give yourself some credit. Some of us learned a lot of lessons. Others may have learned just one. There are some important truths that were revealed to some of us, while others had to look in the mirror and for the first time in a while, if ever, really face themselves. And that's tough. But use what you learned to charge boldly through 2021. There may be some fear, maybe a lot of uncertainty, but I encourage you to keep going. There are so many resources available to you if you know where to look and you know who to ask. I hope you have a very good friend group and your inner circle is tight. So if you feel like you're struggling, ask for help and use discernment in who you're asking for help. That's really important. If you have goals you need to accomplish and you feel like you need the support, I encourage you to find and join an accountability group or create one for yourself. And I can say this because that's something I'm doing. There are goals that I just need that extra push to get done. So I joined an accountability club and it's been very good because it keeps me on my toes and it keeps me honest. So if you need something like that, find one or create it for yourself. You may need a group, you may need a partner, but having that accountability is important, especially if your goals are so important to you and they keep you up at night, do it. And also take care of yourself. For 2020, 2019, maybe beyond that, self-care and self-love were the buzz terms. And guess what? They're still relevant today. You have to put yourself first. And that's going to look different for each of us. And it's amazing how much we know, but yet we still need reminders. I had to be reminded that it is important to rest. That yes, your goals are important. And you may be accustomed to having a certain level of stress, but you cannot ignore the signs. And I was ignoring the signs until I no longer could. So I encourage you, my beautiful souls, my beautiful sisters and queens that you are, Pay attention to the signs. Pay attention to what your body is telling you. If you are tired, examine that because this is a unique time that we're in. But don't take it lightly. If you're feeling stressed, pay attention to that. Whether or not your job creates that kind of stress, look at how it's manifesting itself in your body. Don't take it lightly. If you don't feel like yourself, then you may need to talk to someone. You may need to talk to a professional. And if you're okay, if you're good, it's all good, then that's great. Whatever you're doing to stay in that space, keep doing it. And if it's a tip, and if it's a resource, and if it's a routine that you're practicing, and you can share it, I encourage you to share it. Spread the love, share the knowledge. I use an app that's called Let's Meditate. 
and it has different guided meditations for different purposes. And at the start of my day, I do a meditation that focuses on gratitude. Because to be very frank, there are days I don't want to get out of bed. There are days I do not want to do any work. So I have to find a way and I found a way to get me out of bed because hiding under the covers is not an option. And I found that this particular meditation really helps to kickstart the day because for the 11 minutes or so, I'm guided to reflect on the things, on the people, on the experiences that I'm really grateful for. And for those 11 minutes, I think about nothing else except reasons I am grateful. And that's how I start my day. And I'm telling you, when you are sincere, when you are truly sincere about being grateful and starting your day in the spirit of gratitude, it sets the tone. It sets the tone for the day. And something major has to happen to knock you off balance. And it's important that you start your day in a way that sets you up to have a good day. It's really important because it is easier to maintain that momentum than to start the day poorly and try to correct. Now, I've heard this saying or this principle that the first seven minutes that you are awake are crucial to how the rest of your day is going to go, which is why we're encouraged not to check emails, not to go on social media, not to respond to messages, because you may see something, read something, hear something that could upset you, turn you off, hurt you, frustrate you, and those aren't the emotions you want to start your day with. That's not the energy that you want to start your day with. You want to start with the energy of hope. You want to start your day feeling grateful, feeling positive. And don't get me wrong, you may not wake up feeling that way. I certainly don't wake up eyes bright and ready to take on the day. <laughs> no, I don't. I certainly don't. You know those actresses that when they wake up in the musical, it's like lights, camera, action, and the smiles are bright and beautiful. And it's like, yes, I'm awake. It's time to take on the day. Mm -mm. <laughs> That's not me, at least not every day. So let me be clear. You don't have to wake up like that. Not every day. What I'm saying is in the first seven minutes that you are awake, whatever you do, can and will impact the rest of your day. So if you wake up feeling amazing and energized and just ready to take on the day, then that is amazing and good for you. That's fantastic. Now just make sure you keep doing things that keep you in that spirit, keep you in that vibe so you can conquer your day. And if you happen to wake up and you want to retreat under your covers, then what you do in that first seven minutes will either keep you under those covers or you'll get up and face the day. So meditation is one thing. Having a gratitude reflection is something else you can do. Just sitting still and just being intentional with your breath. Have you ever stopped and taken notice of how you're breathing? I was shocked the first time I did that and realized I was breathing so shallow. There are moments I was holding my breath and I was even conscious of it. So simple and effective things like those can really make a difference in your day. And if you do something that makes you proud or puts a smile on your face, celebrate it. Take that moment and celebrate it. When you get those wins, big or small, celebrate it because trust me, it makes a difference and it helps you to feel good. And when you can feel good, you absolutely should 
So if you got up and you did a little workout and that's not something you normally do, make a big deal about it. You got up and you had breakfast when you normally don't, celebrate it. You got some good news. Somebody did a shout out for amazing work that you did. Somebody gave you a compliment. You responded to a situation in a very mature and grown way when that's not normally you. You problem solved without losing it. You gave an idea that somebody was receptive to. Whatever it is, celebrate it and remind yourself that you are amazing. You are powerful. You are resilient. Take that moment to look back at all the evidence that you are a phenomenal woman. So my beautiful souls, I really could not let this week end and not celebrate International Women's Week. I really hope you made a big deal about International Women's Day. And if you didn't, haven't, or couldn't, you still have the rest of this week to do so. You still have the rest of this month to do so. So do something for yourself. Do something for your sister circle. Do something for your good girlfriends to celebrate the fact that you are a woman, a phenomenal woman. I trust that as this year progresses, that you will walk in hope, in your purpose, in the knowledge that you have a right to be here, that if you fall, it is okay. If it takes you a little while to get up, that is fine too. Give yourself the grace and the compassion that you need because as phenomenal as you are, you're also a flawed human being. And I know we love to chant and celebrate and get behind the term black girl magic because we are magical. We do have that magic, that power, that gift. But as magical as we are, my queens, we're also still human. So please don't get trapped in the idea that because you have and you are black girl magic, that you can't ask for help, that you can't say you're tired, that you can't say, no, I don't have it in me to give to you, that you can't say, I need rest, I need a break, I need to just be, I am human, I am flawed, I will make mistakes because you are and that's the beauty of this life it's filled with paradoxes it's filled with duality so you can be magic and you can be flawed you can be a goddess and you can be and are a human being so remember that and let that guide you in how you first deal with yourself and how you deal with others, especially your fellow sisters, your fellow queens, whether they too have a black girl magic or they don't. So thank you so much for listening. It was my absolute pleasure to share with you again. I look forward to bringing you more amazing content and to leaving you feeling inspired and motivated. And I'm happy to remind you that you are amazing. So until next time, remember, there are two sides to every coin. Just flip it to get the full view. Catch you next week. Bye.